What's up anime Ball Z fans, Griddle here with Two Point Vote and Steve Bloom. We are at Armageddon, second interview. Oh my god, Steve Bloom! Oh. <laughs> I'm starstruck. I'm, I'm starscream, so we're even. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, now, um, I actually have a question. What has been the most challenging role you've ever taken on? As this this one right here, speaking into this camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an on-camera guy. The, the, uh, honestly, the voice acting thing isn't necessarily challenging except for physically. Uh, when I'm doing characters like Wolverine, that sort of thing, and I'm screaming my guts out of the booth and, and pieces of me are flying out onto the microphone, that's probably the most challenging sort of thing and just the recuperation time from that. Other than that, it's all play time for me. I just I have a good time going there and just making stuff up. Yeah, your, your portrayal of um, Akishi and Azuka in GCO was the reason I got to teaching. Oh god, I, was, that's a bad reason. It is a horrible <laughs> reason, but it's like, you know what, I could do that too. I could be a great teacher as well. Uh, but no, like, what have been, what have been your favorite roles to do? Oh man, they're like kids. It's, it's like, if you have three kids and you're holding them over a cliff, which one do you draw? That's that's how I would answer that question. So which one? Which I can't, I... <laughs> 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 the most obedient one. Is, I like a challenge. Um, <laughs> no, I. You know, each character yeah, holds a different place in my heart. They're all little pieces of me. I think at some point, and some become more iconic than others, and some just sort of go to the wayside. Um, you know, the ones that people know best are probably the Spike from Calvary Bebop, and that was one of the most iconic things in my career. In fact, that's that's uh, my voice there doing just saying bang. Spike in the very last episode. Um, so it was such a benchmark in my life that I decided to immortalize it on there. And it, it led to so many other things, including things like Magus XLR, we were talking about that before. Oh, yes. And shows like Magus hold a dear place in my heart too because uh, the guys that started that show were big Cowboy Bebop fans. And it just didn't get the play that we were all hoping for. Right. And it should have continued on forever. And there's so much material to draw from that those kind of shows made me sad. Uh, but then other things like uh, Wolverine, of course, because I was a comic book fan growing up, and to be able to play a character that's so iconic like that is just an amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, Starscream, of course, because I'm a Transformers fan, that's always really cool. Always been yeah. And then I like the weird characters, too. I like the really weird-ass characters, like Leron from Grim Logon. And going from doing something like a Wolverine voice to saying something like, when you screw it in, give it a hard, manly twist, time. I mean, to be able to do that in the same day is is just awesome. Yes. It's, you know, just the other levels of awesome. That's just amazing. Um, you also voice one of my favorite psychotic <laughs> villains <laughs> out there, Orochimaru. Yes. It's like a mix between if like the rumors of Michael Jackson meets Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It was that's awesome. pretty dead on. Yeah, that's Except cool. spitting snakes. Well, that's where the Voldemort thing comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he spit snakes? I don't know. He didn't spit him. He had the yeah. Voldemort thing. Yeah, 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 he did. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, why don't you tell us about that mindset to do a character like Origin Uh, There's, well, for me, I just match up what's going on on the screen. And with anime, we have the luxury of it all being done before. So I go in and I just try to create a voice that doesn't sound like wheels rolling on a carpet behind the camera as we're doing an interview. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Hi! Uh, so... <laughs> okay. That, that's what happens for live TV, folks. So if you want to get into it, this is the glamour that we experience every day. Anyway, uh, Rochimaro. We were talking about Rochimaro. Yeah. Rochimaro, um, I basically looked at the, the uh, what was going on on screen and I tried to come up with something that was creepy and, and sexual and deadly at the same time and it worked. Creepy. I just I was, sexual and deadly. Yeah, I, I like the combination. Yeah, I was just happily surprised that it worked and they bought it and, and there it goes. So continue for and, a while. And this what is kills me is the like incessant infatuation with Sasuke. That yeah. Original R has getting to say I want another man's body every day is a very exciting thing because I don't get to do that in normal life without getting in trouble. Uh, well um you've also done video games as well. Yes. Yes. Um, why don't you take us the, through how that's done, the oh. difference from anime? Well, video games is basically a cacophony of lines. Anime, we're doing one line at a time, and taking our time, maybe we'll get through 40 lines in an hour. In a video game uh, recording, we can get through 200 lines in an hour, sometimes more. And it's just fast food as quickly as we possibly can to get it done. I guess and when things are bad, we're like, ha! 
Yeah, I mean, that's the fastest that's, that's, part that's of it. A full, that's a full line, right? That is, that is. And, so. and uh, often we'll get a lot of description around that. In fact, I did the Lego Batman. I was the voice of Batman in that Lego that's Batman. Cool. And literally there was a half page of discussion on how a grunt is supposed to be uh, developed. Well, and so he would, he would just be acknowledging something for Robin to jump onto a zip line somewhere. And there would be all of this uh, exposition about how it was supposed to happen. And then I go up to do the line, it's just, Ugh. and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so something like that, it's, it's the, uh, the description of it is much more difficult than the actual job, but things, again, like Wolverine or, or doing Tank MC from Call of Duty, those kinds of things are just physically demanding. It just balls out screaming as hard as I can. Now, as we said before about Cowboy Bebop, in my opinion, that's a show that transcends anime. It's just great TV. Like, anyone can enjoy it. Um, would you like to maybe give us a bit of the experience it was doing that show. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop was pretty early on in my career and I didn't really have any idea of the scope of that show, of how great it actually was. In the beginning, I never really had a chance to hear uh, or see the, the background stuff that was going on, the incredible soundtrack from Yoko Kano and the full scope of the story. All I heard was my little sections. So I was kind of in my little bubble there and, and seeing it, uh, how it hit the public, and the sensibility uh, years later was the most surprising thing for me. Twelve years later now, going to convention. Unfortunately, unfortunately it's cut a little thick. Damn it. We're out of, we're out of time. <laughs> but thank you so thank much. You, thank you guys for having me. That's all right. All right. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Safe right. space, Cowboys. Peace. Bang.